This viral New York Times author just said that the overeducated Ivy League graduates who didn't become rich are the ones to blame for the endless culture wars in America. David, that is a mouthful, but we're going to dive into it and explain what he's trying to say, and then we'll give you our opinion. Yeah, we got to talk about this viral article from New York Times conservative com columnist david brooks it's called the sins of the educated class and he also references this book from musa al garbi called we have never been woke the cultural contradictions of a new elite mm. all right so what we got to do here is we'll give you like a summary we'll go through some excerpts then we'll break down what we think he missed out on and uh, maybe some possible solutions if he offered any. Yeah, yeah, because I would say that I agree with definitely uh, a lot of what he said. I do think he left some points out. So anyway, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smile Out Sauce at SmileOutSauce.com. This one is a little bit of a doozy. Uh, he opens up by saying that progressive energy, Andrew, used to be possessed by the working class during the Industrial Revolution, but over the decades, progressive narrative, like the ship, like if we were to look at progressiveness like a ship, the captain no longer became the working class of the industrial era, but really the thinking class of the elite colleges. Mm, yes, right, right. I mean, he goes on to use examples about how a lot of protests happen at the elite colleges or that a lot of uh, progressiveness at the elite college, that's a lot of the graduates from these elite schools, these Ivy League schools where people are very, come from, most people come from privileged backgrounds in some sense. They go there and then they... Uh, graduate, and if they don't get a high-paying job, then oftentimes they go into activism or journalism or being an author. Right, and basically he says that elite colleges are for rich kids, and there's a lot more protest there, and it kind of doesn't make sense because those rich kids will go on to basically perpetuate the systems that they're protesting against in college, which causes a lot of cognitive dissonance mm. because he calls it false consciousness. Wow. Because okay. you're anti-elite, but you love being part of the elite that can shape the narrative against the elites. You mean it's kind of like I'm against littering, but I still need to use up all this plastic all the time because it makes my life more fun. I guess it would be the equivalent of like, I am trying to save the environment, but of course I need me and my private jet to fly around the world to save the environment. Or just to enjoy life, right? right. Yeah. He also says that progressivism has practically become an entry ticket into the elite. Basically, a few years ago, um, being versed in issues of social justice became a requirement to get into elite colleges. Uh, he, interesting. Yeah, and to your point, he said they're overproducing elites. And he said that there's all these kids that, and he said that this is a symptom of, you know, obviously parents, I'm sure, wanting their kids to be elite and everybody from around the world come to, comes to America to try to get into these elite schools. But what they find once they graduate, Andrew, is that there are more elite college spots than there are spots amongst the actual elites of America. Right. So basically he's saying is like a lot of these are, I guess, failed elites where they went to great schools. They went to these Ivy Leagues. They went met rich kids. They know rich people. They know these elite people, but they couldn't actually make it into part of that class of people whether they didn't marry in or get a job or, or it's just way more complicated than you think it is right you can't just go to a university and then become like everybody else right right so he says that these kids once they realize that they can never enter the true elite they enter the literati academic or journalistic elite where they can still affect things and have outsized power even though of course only a few of them are ever going to make big money. Oh my gosh, man. He's roasting these kids. Right. Okay. But he says these poor but elites basically start in an emotional war with the populist rednecks or sort of like a, two, two groups that they're fighting with. The poor but elites that are in the academic or journalist crowd. They started with the kids who did become rich in finance and tech the tech bros, the uh -huh. Elons, right? But then, uh, or, you know, the Christian Bale character in American Cycle. But they also basically just start the culture war with general, like, uneducated, more populist, in my words, rednecks on the right. Mm, okay, so do you think it's kind of like a power thing then? Because these kids who went to good schools but aren't from rich backgrounds or didn't become rich, now they're in a culture war and using their wits and brain and kind of like writing power and vo vocabulary and connections to dump on, I guess, 
less educated right wing people. Right. And then he's saying that these inflammatory thought leaders, but he does say on all sides, they basically distract everybody in America from doing the real work. But he's more so blaming the left thought leaders. Right. So he acknowledges that the right side has the same issue, too. I right. mean, dude, there's there's Republican kids who go to colleges. Yes. So they're they're part of the same issue. But it seems that. There's more of this on the left side. Right. So then he goes on to say that he quotes a uh, French thinker from the 1970s called Bourdieu. He argued that just as economic capitalists use their resources, wealth to amass prestige and power, people who form the educated class and the cultural elite symbolic capitalists use our resources, beliefs, fancy degrees, linguistic abilities to amass prestige, power, and if they can get it, money. Basically, these people are not real capitalists, but they are sync symbolic capitalists that embroil everybody into symbolic consecration basically like a water where all people swim now where they are basically the moral wars of america giving people genuine sense of meaning and purpose but ultimately nothing is achieved well all right guys uh Again, we'll leave the article linked down below if you guys can read this article yourself. You want to go through it, but essentially, is that is that the summary? Yeah, else? he's basically saying people are now living in this awful, perpetual state of cultural war, and there's a continual state of social fear causing the center silent, causing them to keep their heads down to survive. Why have these three dynamics I've just listed off continue to drive American society batty? Basically, he's saying the things that he just said are basically causing these really smart people to go against war against these not as smart people, but nothing is ultimately getting done for anybody. Ah, uh, okay. All right. I mean, that was, you let us know in the comments down below if you understand. I, I, I really hope that you people leave a comment after hearing the summary of the article. But uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, David, what do people think about this article? Well, I think that a lot of people agree with some of his points but obviously he's a little bit more of a right-wing writer so you see the left saying okay you might make some points but what about all the rich tech bros and finance bros that siphoned off all of the wealth shrinking the middle class right okay because he's saying and they're saying maybe this is caused by the middle class shrinking so basically there it's hard to argue that with david brooks what he said being true because it does sound pretty true you mean his but profile of a person when he's profiling a type, this type of archetype of person, he is being fairly accurate. Well, we work in this field. We know a ton of these people. Right, right. Actually, Personally, yeah, actually. We've worked with some and we're friends people. with some of them. And they're Asian too yeah. and, and white or, or white Asians that kind of act like whites. But I'm saying that he might be leaving out his maybe own ideology sides culpability in all this. Right, right. Because he doesn't, it's kind of like, it implies that this is not as big of an issue with the Republicans. But I guess- my overall takeaway when I was like reading these excerpts and reading the article, man, it was kind of like, uh, what, when he talks about the real work, David, what is the real work that he's talking about that's not getting done? Because he's like, okay, so the progressives who come from these educated schools, they're not actually getting down to the nitty gritty right. of the real work. They're just kind of perpetuating these, these fueling these culture wars that we have that, that tears everybody apart and makes everybody fear. What is the he, real work? So, so here's the real work. And we have to use the example of Native Americans because he talks about how the progressive left, liberal elite, academic, Harvard, Yale, blah, 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 Princeton have been on the side of the Native Americans for decades. But he said, if you look at the metrics, what have they really done? There's been no market improvement in Native American communities. Mm, I think I've heard people say the same thing about the black community, right? They kind of similar saying. Yes, 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 yes. That's, that's their argument. Th that's the argument. So I guess what I'm saying is the left, they're always against naming the Cleveland Indians or uh, the Redskins, right? right? They wanted to rename the teams. Right. Uh, but what if they had kept the teams the same, but then made the teams give up way more money to developing the actual Native American Indian reservations? Right. They're like the education systems, better schooling on the reservations. Just and building like better that. programs and not just like welfare either, like not just giving them money, but building systems well, to fix the systemic issues that are emanating at the core. Well, I have a, I have a, uh, if, if that's the question that Mr. Brooks is asking. No, me, no, because I'm saying if you look at the right wing, the most right wing version, it'd be like, nah, man, leave the teams, call, leave, uh, let them call the teams whatever they want. It ain't bad. 
And then if you want to look at the left version, they're like, this is so demeaning and so representative of a colonial mentality of when Columbus came here and eliminated the tribes. But nobody's actually fixing the problems on the reservation. Nobody wants to give up the money. That's the thing. Right. Nobody wants to give up money, the left or the right. The left is like, hey, change the names, make people feel better. And then the right is like, oh, who cares how they feel, man? F your feelings, man. Just work harder, or do better, or whatever. And then it's like, no one wants to give up any percentage of their money from any industry to actually truly help people. And that's why that whole opinion that I just said is considered very like, centrist or moderate or like an Andrew Yang type deal where it's like, we'll give people money and, you know, help people not be in poverty versus all this other stuff, you know, whether you change the name or you f throw their colors up or you have a day named after them or you say none of that matters. No, some of it matters, but also the real stuff actually matters. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I I'll relate it to something Asian just because so maybe, you know, the audience can more understand it. I don't want Lunar New Year off. I think people should just learn to respect Asian history and Asian people more in school during Lunar New Year. Mm. Why yeah. just give it off? Like, what is the point of that? You mean, the, what's the point of the schools dude, having a day off for Lunar New Year? The kids who are not Asian are not even going to care or learn anything or respect Asians more for their contributions. No, it's the same thing. I mean, to be honest, like, you know, I mean, I grew up, learning so much about Martin Luther King, but nowadays I don't know how much the kids on their day off are talking about Martin Luther King on Martin right. Luther King Day Jr. day. Like So I guess what I'm saying is I, I agree with the comments that he's is leaving out that obviously the middle class is getting shrunk and all the black rock is buying up all the real estate and finance tech, fintech, whatever it is. I get that part. I think that that's a valid argument to poke holes in David uh Brooks article on the left. But I'll just say this man. It is true that on the left, Andrew, the moral narcissism and not understanding the incentives of human nature is probably their biggest flaw, right? Mm. Sort of like if you're like if you're talking about like somebody who's like ultra left, they're against gun rights for like rednecks, right? But then if somebody in a maybe a liberal city commits a gun crime, they're way more willing to let that person out of jail. Mm. That doesn't make any sense. It's a little weird. It's There's weird. literally it's no weird. logic in that, right? It's weird. And then on the right. It's probably like not understanding that the over support or over, over catering to big business, big pharma, military, industrial complex, it will have downstream impacts on the average everyday person. Yeah. But it's not just like, I, I think sometimes the right's biggest flaw is like, they have a tendency to be like, oh yeah, that's all over your heads, guys. You don't understand. We have to do all this stuff to keep America the number one world superpower that you guys won't understand. But there is going to be downstream negative impacts on an average person. Right. You know what Good. I mean? Like, even though you think it's like above their pay grade. I, I think nobody wants to do the real work. So that's what I would say against his article is his assertion. I agree with his one liner that a lot of the, these Ivy league graduates who say they're, who are from pretty privileged backgrounds who say they're progressive actually are not getting that much done. I agree with that, but I also I disagree with the idea that like what the Republic, like people on this side are doing the right thing. Like are, right. Who's, who's really getting the work done? Who's really getting the work done? Who's actually sitting people down and being like, hey guys, listen, this is actually how the world works. People need some money. They need some assistance. They don't need all the assistance, but you need to push them somehow. You need to help them out. Okay, we need to help them build better schooling, education, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, just changing this name and, and doing that is not giving them another avenue. Right. Even you can't like, just be giving people fish or don't teach them anything. Probably everybody can no. get together and teach people how yeah, to fish yeah, no, no, no. if for, they want. Obviously, it depends. Not everybody's going to learn because not everybody's thinking. From like an it. Asian perspective, they're they're going to give uh, some uh, Bruce Lee way to. They're going to rename uh, one of the streets out here Bruce Lee Way, I think. And that's cool. Shout out to Bruce Lee, but like. If that's what we used all our energy just to win that, I don't know if that was worthy. No, how about like an actual Asian task force to solve the problems in the community that are actually like a hundred of them on a list and right. go down the list. I'll say this. We might need some national service in America like Singapore, Andrew. I'm not saying everybody got to go to the military, but we might need to have people just get together and just go, you know what, regardless of whatever side of emotion, over emotionalized culture war you're on or I'm on, we're going together and we're like cleaning up this park. And the way we're going to clean it up is like 
it'll never get dirty again. Because you can't just go up into a park and sweep it up, right? If people are just going to make it dirty again, you have to like trim the bushes and like redesign the park to make it so it's like, it's not even able to become dirty again. Right, right, right. Or as dirty as it was. Or right, it's easier right, to clean. Right. The pathways are like Yeah, yeah. Why doesn't there some government sponsored? You bring the you can bring the police barricades out to make sure it's a safe space for everybody to go clean up stuff. And it's not even that you can't pay someone in New York to clean up something. It's really just getting all these different kids from different backgrounds to do something positive together. Anyways, guys, uh, oh, you know, I got one more. I oh, got yeah, one, one more. more. What, what, Honestly, what? I think any leaders... And, and really anybody, but I, I guess it's too much to ask of an average citizen. Everybody should be like, have the brain work, right? Which is the academic, you know, the theories, you're reading all the French thinkers, you know, because the French always are on some different thinking for the Western civilization. But you really have to have run a business. Mm. If you ran a, a value adding business in a low income community, in a middle class community, in a rich community, that's when you'll really understand how life actually works. All right, everybody has to work some type of customer service retail job at some point. I swear to God, man, when you got to deal with customer service, when you got to deal with customers, it's humbling, man, and it teaches you human emotion. All right, anyways, uh, David. Uh, thank you for summarizing that. That was kind of complicated, but we are going to leave the link down below. Hopefully you guys understood it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, overall, you know, agree with some of his points, but I kind of disagree with the tone and where he, you know, a lot of these authors, they never have solutions. Yeah. Yeah. There is no, cause David Brooks, he never ran a business. He never had his own net worth tied hey. up in a brick and mortar. He consumer facing business man he's good at observations though all right everybody so uh please hit that like button uh hit that super thanks button if you guys appreciate these types of videos we appreciate your support and until next time we out peace, peace.